the good thing is that once you do this, you will know your class and you will make sure that the, this, the weaknesses in your class are tended to as much as possible. All right, y'all, so I teach mathematics. So, oh, lovely, perfect, that's good. My name is Rajesh and I created but I shouldn't say I created. What I realized happened naturally, I started to repeat questions, uh, the type of questions and increase the difficulty. And then only to find out when I was explaining to my colleague, she says, you know, that's called scaffolding assignments. So I said, oh, interesting. So I did some research on it. And this is basically uh, me filtering through stuff and presenting what I did naturally and aligning it with some literature. Right, so this is what we have. Scaffolding assignments, semi-interactive handouts. I have a miscellaneous good book. I'll explain that in a while. And question and answer. But feel free to ask the questions right throughout this, this seminar. Well, the presentation. I'm going to spend most of the time on scaffolding assignments. Probably about 10 minutes or so. It's the bulk of it. And everything else will flow naturally. As with anything in education, you have a lot of different definitions. More or less, that says the same thing. So I'm just going to put two definitions on the screen and I'll read the first one. So scaffolding is the process of breaking down a larger writing assignment. Now, generally scaffolding is done in, the, in, the, in writing as it says, right? You, are, you need to write an essay, you need to do a project, mainly writing based, but I kind of tailor made it to, to maths. Well, it's what I did naturally, right? It, it just did it naturally. Um, that focuses on skills or types of knowledge students required to successfully complete a larger assignment. That's from University of Colorado. The other two definitions were taken from University of Michigan. And sequencing and scaffolding are generally talked about at one, in one. But I don't want to go into sequencing. And I didn't want to pull out the sequencing definition from uh, the scaffolding definition from the, the paragraph that they gave. But scaffolding, the last point, uh, you scaffold tasks within the assignments by breaking it down into manageable tasks that add up to a whole. So in other words, forget about academics. If your goal is to pick mangoes from a mango tree, task one, pick mango with a rod on the ground. So you give them that. Task two, learn to climb a mango tree. End goal, Go and pick mangoes on the ground, climb the tree and pick the mangoes. So you all see it, right? Different tasks that get you to the goal. What, so that's the traditional way how it's generally done. What I realized that I was doing, I was scaffolding on difficulty as well. So after you climb your mango tree, what I did, okay, climb a six foot mango tree and pick mangoes. Next assignment, climb a 10 foot mango. Next assignment, 20 foot mango tree. So I scaffolded on the difficulty as well. So I was doing a combination of both. Scaffolding on the tasks. And then when I reach the, the exam type questions, I would go up in difficulty. So that will be done diagrammatically. So two types of uh, scaffolding, the traditional one, which is skills. And in, in my research, I didn't find anybody scaffolding on difficulty. I didn't do an extensive research, you know, so I still have to do an extensive research. So I just put my name with a question mark. Hopefully, if nobody does it, then I could hopefully get a paper from it. Uh, that's my mango tree example that I now explain. Uh, so this is the stuff here. I know it's maths. I know some people just naturally don't like maths. <laughs> um, but it's simple maths, right? So we have uh, the weeks are the columns, one, two, three. And the skill tested are the rows, second row. So let's look at question one. We have x minus four. You simply add to solve, right? You add four. So that column gives you different variations of it. The second one is, in that case, you would add x. And the last one, you minus x, right? You go column two, two x minus four is zero. So there you have to add and then you have to divide. So the divide is the next principle that's being dealt with there. Uh, the, the column gives the same examples. And then the third column will be the goal. So it's a mixture of both because you have to add well, twice and divide if necessary. So you'll you follow what's going on, right? So that's the traditional scaffolding. So what I did now in column three, I scaffolded on that. So I extracted column three. I have an easy one, x plus four equals five. I have a medium one, three x plus nine equals two x minus three. And then I have a real difficult one that looks intimidating. 400 x divided by two plus nine over two equals to 18 minus five x. 
But it's the same type of equation, it's the same linear equation. You have followed it perfect. So this is how it would look in your assignment. So weeks at the top, and E is for easy, M is for medium, and H is for hard. A, B, C, D go down would be the topic. So in week one, I introduce topic A, and it's an easy topic. You'll see the E, right? Week two now, I introduce topic B, easy, but topic A goes to medium difficulty. Week three, A goes to hard, B goes to medium, and I introduce C. Week four, and you keep going. You keep going like that. The thing is, if you have an excellent marker, you are able to get direct feedback to know which questions you could leave out. So let's say by assignment three, I realize students are still getting my question A wrong. I might just add one more question. Or if everybody gets it correct, I'll just leave it out. You all following? And it is, it's very fluid. So there are some drawbacks and there are some positives. One of the drawbacks is, is very demanding on the lecture. Because no longer could you have these, these stock assignments at the start of the semester and just send them out. The good thing is that once you do this, you will know your class. And you will make sure that the, this, the weaknesses in your class are tended to as much as possible. So um, by week four, let's say assignment four, naturally assignment four kind of serves as a revision as well, right? Because you would have done all, more or less all the topics. Then we have a difficulty level. So the percentage of content in the assignment. Now, when you now introduce an assignment, so a, a topic, sorry, the easy ones, you'll have plenty questions because you, you, they want to get the basics. Then when you go to medium now, then you have less questions. And when you go difficult, you'll probably have one question because they, they should know what's going on by that time. So the percentage of the content decreases. So it's inversely proportional to the difficulty level. So we have benefits of scaffolding. Anybody could give some benefits. We have a handout here, nice little handout. Um, take, take one, pass it down. Something as questions are broken down into smaller parts. So if you have a big question, but now that big question is in smaller parts, the amount of work you have to do becomes less, yeah? So it becomes more M manageable, right? So write it manageable. Well, well done, well done. So the second one, um, revision is done on a something basis. Conti yeah, continue. She's like, that's so simple. This is so simple, right? I mean, come on. And the third one allows more time to something the information, thus assimilate, assimilate. Well done, well done. Everybody's on point, boy. You know, everybody's on point. And then we have benefits for, te for teachers. Highlights areas that students are something in deficient, challenge, weak, struggling, right? So something you could you could fill in there. So now we have um it adds flexibility to teaching, meaning that you know where where these students are going wrong. You could spend an extra ten minutes in class to address a topic. Oppositions and responses to scaffolding. So everything has its positives and negatives. So some students say the assignments are too long because now instead of having one topic, you have many different topics. Really simple. Tell them the harder questions are bonus questions. So it would not re retract from the grade if you don't do the questions. And, and let them know, let them know. And, or you can simply tell them that you're not going to mark the question. So either make it a bonus question or make it not mark. But the good thing about it is that even though you do that and you tell them that some students will still do it, and those are the students who want to learn more. And to me, that is better because at least you give them the opportunity to go more into it. And it doesn't take out anything from the rest of the class. Yeah? Um, now, there's another handout I have here for you all. This is not my handout. The, the source is at the bottom. But I wasn't going to um, write these and discuss all these. So this is something to, to go home, to go around now. Cater for the back, right? So that is something simply to go through on your own time, right? So now we come to semi-interactive handouts. Now we have the normal handouts, which is the white paper, which is just a handout you read. And I kind of coined the term 
Now I know when you think about interactive handouts nowadays, people think about you have a handout online and you, you click on something and something comes up and you click and you click. No, no, no. This is pen and paper, right? So what I call a semi-interactive handout is exactly the yellow paper. Give you the handout and you interacted with the handout. You went through with me and you wrote. You all thought about what word could I have? You know, this is continuous or this is easy. So you get these students to pay attention while you teach in class. They're not bored. And if done properly, you reward them with chocolate or something. And that simple app will have them looking, hey, students are asking a question, say I get to it first. And it's not going to take much. Yes, it does cost, but you can get this for what, $150 price, Matt, and that lasts for the whole semester. How many courses you're teaching? And to me, it's a good investment because you have the class engaged with you throughout. So that is um, the semi-interactive handout. Uh, you, you gain participation, rewards. So it's kind of gamifying the, path, the act of coming to class. Um, discuss pros and cons, but I mean, I'm not going to discuss that here. Uh, you all could look it up, you all could brainstorm for yourselves. Um, feel free to experiment with the classes. Uh, let me know. Uh, those are my handles. I'll, I'll leave it on the screen after, but I just want to go through a couple more things. This is miscellaneous. Positive feedback book. So I've been teaching for a while. And this is something that I wanted to start earlier. It's only my, 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 one of my friends um, told me about it. And this book just has comments that students write nice things about me. So, you know, some, some students come and say, say, you could really teach. So, I, I, I really appreciate it. I say, hey, what's up? Write it in this book. So, I have comments right through over the years. Because, you, I mean, you, you get the compliments, you get them, but then you, you forget. You simply forget. But when you have something to read, it goes a long way. And well, they pretty it up, you know, they, they do, they make it look nice, they write nice stuff. So when I, this is when I lectured and this is when I tutor. So when I tutor, I, I also have comments to the back here. And I simply tell them, here what, write down your comments on a paper and I'll bring the book in class and you write, you transfer it. Because we don't want any scratches or, or things like that. Right? Uh, this slide here is just to say thanks for the people who created this slide. That's the, that's the condition I could use this slide. So it's slide go. Um, apart from that, uh, those are my handles. Any, anybody has any questions, comments, feedback? You would like me to clarify anything? <laughs>